Welcome back viewers to part four and if this will absolutely be the last part for all of you who have Pluto in the 12th house or in Pisces and Cody you were right when you said that you had that intuitive prompting that this was going to be very very essential for you well I thank you for asking me to do this because now you haven't just helped yourself, but you have helped every single other individual out there who has this same placement as you do. Now, they, when they're ready, they will be drawn to this video and they will be able to take, start, take caring, start to take care of this for themselves. So thank you again, Cody. Okay. All right, let's continue here. Okay. So I'm going to back up just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and work is necessary because of itself. It is a dynamic that promotes a focus through which these individuals can harness and channel the undefined energies of their 12th house Plutos. When one is working, one is involved in an activity that promotes processing or focusing of oneself through that activity. Thus, work serves as a mirror or lens in which these individuals can experience, witness, see, or analyze all the emotions, moods, feelings, images, statements, excuse, excuse me, not statements, states of being, inner dynamics and component parts that surface into their consciousness because of the activity of work. In this way, these individuals can adjust, change, eliminate, or purify components or dynamics that are creating blockage, that are being misapplied or misunderstood, or that are delusive by nature. In addition, these individuals are learning lessons about reality as it is, not what they want to see, not what they blindly want to pretend is happening, not what they want to make reality into based on fantasy, delusions, or naivety. The development of this current evolutionary intent usually demands that these individuals experience cycles of crisis. Crisis brings situations to a head into sharp relief. Okay, so did you hear that? I'm going to say that sentence again. That's very important. The development of these current evolutionary intent, of this current evolutionary intent, usually demands that these individuals experience cycles of crises. So it's Pluto has definitely played a role in any past crises you've had in your life or if you are in current crisis. This is why you're listening. Wow. Crises brings situations to a head into sharp relief. The nature and function of crisis is to force these individuals to deal with reality as it is. To see things just as they are and the actual reasons that it is that way. Crisis can come to these people through the emotional, physical, intellectual, or spiritual bodies. 
many will come into this life with subconscious desires or intentions to create crises for themselves. See, this is why knowing your natal wheel and all of these things in your natal wheel, no blame. No blame on yourself or anyone else. It's just about bringing this out into your conscious awareness so that you can take personal responsibility for everything that has happened to you or you have done to others in this life. This is what it's all about. So you came in or when you were birthed and this because of this positioning of your Pluto in your 12th house or in Pisces, you were going to create circumstances where you would be victimized, where you would have crises assist you. Those crisis situations assist you in this life, bringing things to a head. But again, until you and viewers, you right now who are listening, you now are bringing this out into your conscious awareness. So then now, now you can go back and see why all those crisis situations happened and had to happen. And now you can consciously choose and figure and, and know what and take the positive you can take that positive that is gained now you can take that positive from those crisis situations and I'm getting to some of you okay you might have blamed others all right well you now know where it comes from you didn't know before so you if it's right for you and you're able to make that right and make that right with yourself if you blame yourself and now that's taking responsibility you didn't have the information before when you were blaming or whether it was yourself or others the other people if they were blaming you didn't have the information now you have the information and now you have the privilege to do what is right and I know you will because that's why you're still listening is because you're ready to okay so I'm gonna restate that reread that again many will come into this life with subconscious desires or intentions to create crises for themselves. Sometimes this need for crises can be quite compulsive and unconscious. In many cases, these individuals are not aware of this pattern and do not understand why crises seem to keep occurring. Well, now you understand. Now you know why. And you don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to call that to yourself anymore. Some will assume the attitude of the victim. Others will resign themselves to their uh, quote unquote fate. Some will compulsively create crises in the lives of others as they undermine the relationships that connect them to others. They undermine by subconsciously desiring to dissolve the foundation that binds them to others. Or they undermine by criticism because they feel others should be punished just as they punish themselves for their own errors. Of course, this type of activity only attracts criticism from those upon whom 
they project this behavior. Individuals who have abused power in the past, who have been overly intoxicated with their own egos, or who denied the prior evolutionary intent will experience extreme limitations in relation to finding meaningful work that reflects their capacities. These people will experience reality as it is through the crisis of subservient and mundane work. They will feel as though a big hand is forcefully holding them back. This karmic effect will occur to induce humility, to enforce the awareness of forces greater than themselves. Some of these people will also experience physical problems or disabilities. This form of crisis also enforces analysis as to why this condition exists. Even in such a situation, these individuals are meant to assume some form of service-oriented work. Some 12th house people, excuse me, some 12th house, they are people, you are people, but that's not what it says. Some 12th house Pluto individuals will produce works of lasting value. These are individuals who have been and are, quote unquote, divinely inspired in some way and will serve as examples for others to experience in order to be helped or transformed in some way by the very nature of the work itself. Many of these types, however, need to learn when to take time off for themselves as many become so dedicated to the work, so self-sacrificing that they have no time for a life and identity outside their work. By ignoring the intrinsic 12th house Pluto need to balance work with rest and withdrawal, they can deplete or waste themselves. Some crises will usually intervene to make these individuals pay attention to this need. As these evolutionary lessons are put in motion, all 12th house Pluto individuals will metamorphose into the essence of humility. This will occur through the inverted pyramid effect wherein the totality of cosmic forces pour through the individual. They will reflect an inner illumination that can light the way for others. This effect can occur in all natural evolutionary conditions and through any role that the individual is destined to play within the cosmic scheme of things. In its highest manifestations, these individuals can be the living embodiment of the Taoist principle of, and I don't know how to pronounce this word, W-U-W-E-I. Their actions will be in precise harmony with whatever is required of them at any moment in time. Common characteristics of Pluto in the 12th house or Pisces include deeply private, not what they seem to be as interpreted in others' eyes, deeply sensitive, take things to heart, amazingly shy at a core level, ultra emotional and although you may not know it, can be extremely giving in a silent kind of way. Many deep and unresolved fears, an aura of dreaminess, powerful dreams or never dreams Oh, or you never dream. 
because of exhaustion. And finally, last but not least, naturally psychic. Famous people with Pluto in the 12th house or, Pi or Pisces. Hmm. I don't know how, I'm probably going to butcher this name. Teilhard de Cardin. Clara Barton. Christopher Isherwood. Joanne Sebastian Bach. Oh, it's not Joanne. <laughs> Ohan Sebastian Bach. I believe is the correct. And then last but not least, George Pat Patton. Okay. Let me make sure this is the, I believe this is the right end. I'm just showing their wheels. Yeah. No, there's no, is it more? No. Okay. That's it. Okay. Well, wow. Big, big, big. Very, very, very uh, much needed to read all of it. Okay, so this is the last part, part four. So there are four parts. And what I'm going to do is I will do them separately. So they will premiere a little bit separately. And then I will do my best to put all of the um, links in under all of them, probably. But definitely the first, I will link all of them under the part one, all four links. Okay. So anyway, okay, so... Anyone has any questions? If you do, if any of you need to know your your um, your nodes of the moon, or you want co written copies, let me know. All of my information to email me is in the drop down box below this video and each and every one of my videos. Okay, until next time.